much. It's, we only have an hour, and we don't want to bore you to tears. So we will try to be fast. And I just want to tell you my story, and then ask Nick to tell his story that is much more interesting. <laughs> and then we'll entertain questions. In it. But basically, I'm a foreign student here at the city. I came here from Paraguay to do my undergraduate uh, uh, studies. And everything went well. I was elected ASUOP president and had a lot of fun here on campus. And then right when I was about to leave campus, I fell in love. And I fell in love with a sorority girl. And uh, of course, she wouldn't even talk to me. <laughs> But then, just when I was about to graduate, she said, well, maybe we can talk, and we had a cup of coffee, and I said, love me, and she said, I, <laughs> finally, she, she, she also loved me, after a lot of <laughs> And, um, eventually, we got married, and we moved to South America, and we've been married for 27 years, and we got married here at Morris Chapel at UOP. And when I told my mother that I fell in love with an American, she said, don't marry American. <laughs> and of course, her parents said, do not marry Mexicans. He's not Mexican, Dad. He's from Paraguay. Oh, everybody's Mexican from South America. <laughs> and and uh, my father-in-law says, I sent my daughters to a school in the valley so that they would marry a local guy. Where did you come from? I'm a foreign student. Forgot to compute that, factor that into my formula. So social entrepreneurship is something that is very interesting, even if you are not interested in social entrepreneurship. It will affect you. And I had a very interesting life because I studied public administration here. Just, just to go to show that everything I've done in my life, it was not intentional. I came here, I didn't intend to marry, I got married to an American, how strange can that be? They have strange cultures. For example, Americans celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. Can you imagine? <laughs> you know, of course we all know that Christmas is on the evening of the 24th. You know? So we have had marital crisis about that stuff. <laughs> and you know what else? They have strange Customs. For example, when we had children, she said, you are going to read bedtime stories to the children. And I said, yes. Well, they're upstairs. And they're like, no, no, no. What do you mean? You sit down in the bed and you read them stories. No, I'm not going to do that. That's cruel. <laughs> no, that's being a real father. No, that's cruel. And what about pet bedtime? And I said, what is that? Bedtime. What, why would you, why would you force a child to have a bedtime? And she said, because children need to have limits and they're tired. And I said, why don't you just let them sleep watching television, then you carry them to bed. So as you can imagine, we have had many, many, many problems. She refuses to become culturally sensitive, so she still defends her. In any case. That was not planned. I went to Paraguay. I wanted to, to work in public administration, and I couldn't get a job because of the politics. So by accident, I started the first nonprofit for development in Paraguay. And we started the first microfinance program. Everybody know what microfinance is? Microfinance is giving small loans to unworthy borrowers, right? <laughs> Is that what it is? Bank of Stockton, do they give out $300 loans to a lady that does tortillas in French camp? Why not? Why not? Because she, why not? I don't know. <laughs> why, if you're the Bank of Stockton, let's say you own the Bank of Stockton, there's a lady feeding tortillas to some Mexican migrant workers in French camp. She comes and says, knock, knock, I want a $300 loan. Would you give her if you were the Bank of Stockton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's feeding migrant farm workers. Thanks, I could package like 30 of those micro loans together and sell them uh, off to somebody else in another country. <laughs> Capitalist. <laughs> so would you give her a loan? You would not. Why not? What's the traditional no, thinking? It's not profitable. It's not profitable. 
But how do you, how do you but would you like to give her a loan? Sure. Why? This is a good thing. Why? So uh, uh, she's a poor, maybe illiterate <coughs> woman that you know, produces food. So, so basically, microfinance is a business with a social impact, right? That, so we did that, and we created Paraguay's and one of Latin America's first microfinance programs. And our job was to convince the banking sector to lend to the poor, which has been accomplished. Now, all Paraguayan banks and all Brazilian banks and all Bolivian banks lend to the poor. Now there are more than 150 million micro-businesses in the world receiving micro-loans, mostly in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, South Africa, Kenya, Brazil, Mexico. There's a famous bank in Mexico that had an IPO, went to the uh, capital market, and they all became millionaires. I have friends who became millionaires, and they started working in the slums of Mexico City, giving out loans. Uh, the huge banks wanted to buy their, their microfinance operation, and they paid. So, why does microfinance work? If she's a poor lady who needs a small loan, why does it work? She does not have a balance sheet. She, her, pro, her loan is unprofitable to the bank. Why does it work? Why does she return the loan? You can give it to her for a low interest rate. It's not low interest. It's actually high interest. Why do poor people return the loan. Is there opportunity out of poverty? Is there opportunity out of poverty? The only opportunity. It's the, I mean, you know, what else? Got one what? over here, Martin. What? Their good nature. I mean, their good nature. What do you What do you do when you? give an opportunity to a person that needs that opportunity. That lady at French camp that needs to buy another truck to sell her tortillas to the migrant workers, she, she needs that. What does work do to her? Provides for her family and keeps her safe. And what, is, what happens inside? Hope. And what is hope? The spirit by which So microfinance is not about money, it is also about dignity, right? And people, even though they are poor, they have dignity inside. So, if it works for microfinance, for it, if it works with loans, can it work in another area? We think so, and to make a long story short, we started a microfinance program, and then we said, what if the same principles that apply to microfinance apply to education? What if the poor had dignity? What if it's true, what she says, hope, dignity, self-respect, huh? self-esteem? So. If education, or the low education, is a problem